Oh, hey, how nice of you guys to join us today. Well, I'm back at you guys with another top five list, but I'm going to change things up a little bit today. That's right. From the title, you can see that today's top five is going to be the top five worst car reboots in history, period. So grab some popcorn, bundle yourself up in your little blanket, and let's get this thing started. All right, now number five on the list. It's going to be the 2006 Chevy Impala SS. Where, where do we start with this car? Where do we start with the failure that is the top to bottom of this damn car? Okay, uh, shall we start with a 5.3 liter V8 engine that only produces 303 horsepower? Are you kidding me? 5.3 liters and all you got is 303 horsepower? Shit, we almost had the, the, the Honda S2K catching up to that shit back in the day. That's ridiculous for a V8. All right, well, is it? It's rear wheel drive at least, right? Wrong. Front wheel drive. Somebody in the Chevy plant decided to put a front wheel drive V8 and decided to mass produce this goddamn abomination. Now, this car doesn't even come close to the old school Impala from back in the day that people are still buying to this day. That car enthusiasts, low riders, everybody trying to get that old school Impala. You know why? Because it's a classic, timeless design. And you know what? It's that old school V8. It's real wheel drive. And it's just a beautiful car, man. You know, look at this car. It's, it's amazing. It's beautiful. It's a work of art. Unlike this clunky, plastic, cheap looking thing that, you know, clone back in the 2000s, they all look the same. It looked like a Chevy Malibu or something. You get me? Making 300 horsepower with a front wheel drive. This thing was weighing 3,700 pounds. Come on. Chevy dropped the ball with this one, man. And that's number five on the list. Man, we're just getting started. Number four, the 1996 Chevy Monte Carlo SS. Talk about a damn disgrace, man. Now, if you guys take a look at the old SS, you get me? The, the old Monte Carlo SS, you know, it screamed muscle. Even All right, let's go back to the 70s Monte Carlo SS. Pure raw muscle, muscle car power. All right, you know what? Let's take it up to the 80s. Boom, they got it right on the 80s again. Even till this, till this day, you still find them out on the street. You get me? There's still people driving them 70s and 80 Monte Carlos out in the street, and they're, they're keeping up with, with the best of the best. You get me? You see those things at the drag strip almost every weekend. But you don't see any of these 90s Monte Carlos, though. Yo, this thing came with a V6. A V6 that only made 210 horsepower. You gotta be kidding me. What was wrong? What was Chevy smoking in the 90s when they came up with this crap? Not only that, this thing weighs almost half a damn ton. This thing is Heavy as hell. Another major flop from Chevy back in the 90s, man. When they were, you know, they, they should have, they got the 70s right, they got the 80s right. Somebody fucked up on the 90s and hopefully that person got fired for making this piece of crap. Number three. And that's the 1998 Buick Regal. That's right. Wow. Back in the 80s, the Buick Regal was one of the hottest muscle cars to ever come out. And guess what? It was a V6 out of all things. Now, the, the 80s uh, Regal, specifically the Grand National, was, was uh, rocking a 3.8 liter turbocharged engine. And yo, that thing sounded like the meanest muscle car you've ever heard in your life. You would have never uh, sworn that there was a fucking V6 under the hood. Now, for some reason, fucking Buick decided... To bring the reboot this car back in the 90s, and they brought it back with a V6, man, with a 3.8 liter V6, and everybody was getting all hyped up. They decided to supercharge it. They were trying to copy Pontiac and the Grand Prix back in the day. So they, you know, they decided to supercharge it. This thing barely made 240 horsepower, weighing in at 300, uh, 3,500 pounds, yo. What, what a disgrace, man. How do you compare this beautiful? Grand National, this classic timeless look of the Regal. And then you make this bubble looking thing and you only have 240 horsepower. Now, I know there was a guy out there, you know, who got famous for making one of these really fast. But you never you only people you see driving these Regals is your granddaddy or your grandmama taking this shit out to church because this shit is an embarrassment to drive. Number two, and that's a 2001 Ford Thunderbird. 
That's right. Now, you guys, uh, I don't know if a lot of you guys remember, but back in the 50s, like 1957, the Thunderbird was actually one of the most famous cars to come out in that year. And it was beautiful, man. It was a, a classic, timeless look. You know, Ford Ford was selling these things like fucking hotcakes. You know, and then, you know, in 2001, you know, somebody got the idea, hey, let's bring back the T-Bird, you know, because even in the 90s one, it was coming supercharged and it was all right. You know, it, it was uh, running like on the same platform as uh, I think it was a Mustang. It was just a little bit heavier and it, it was all right, you know, but they decided to bring this back in 2001. And what an epic fail this car was. OK, this thing look. I mean, when you look at this car, look at this thing. It looks like a chicken without feathers. Or like another way to describe it, it's like a submarine on wheels. This thing is hideous. Not only that, the new Thunderbird, when it arrived, it had the same 4.0 liter aluminum uh, V8 that uh, that the Lincoln LS had. Except they decided to destroke it slightly and dumbed it down. So this thing was only making 252 horsepower. 252 horsepower. We're talking about Crown Vic numbers back in those days. And, you know, this was supposed to be the big reboot from Ford, you know, that was supposed to propel it forward into the future. And this thing failed miserably. Number one, and that is the 2017 Acura NSX. I don't know how many of you guys saw this coming, but yo, what the hell is Acura thinking launching this thing? Okay, let, let's discuss the price for a second. This thing starts out at $156,000, right? And that's for the base model. This thing could go up to $200,000. On top of that, it comes with 573 horsepower, okay? And this thing weighs in at 3,800 pounds. We got Dodge Chargers making hell of a lot more horsepower than this hunk of crap. And I understand it's all-wheel drive and all that, but you know what? Another downfall of this car is that it's this thing is like an iPhone on wheels. This thing is computerized from the fucking top to the bottom. It has three electric motors. It has all this technology incorporated into it. This thing is a hot mess, man. Whatever happened to the old school Acura? Look at this thing. Look at the look at the how beautiful this this design was on the old school Acura on, on the nineteen ninety one Acura NSX. Look at this thing. Looks like the Batmobile. Came with two hundred and ninety horsepower, classic Honda engine. You get me? You could turbo this thing. You could boost it. These things are beasts. And then, you know, they, they come up with, they reboot this NSX, and this thing looks like a damn souped-up Acura TL or something, man. If you guys ask me, I think Acura dropped the ball with this one. I was expecting something a little bit cooler. This thing looks, it, this, this thing has been done for years already. They're a little bit late to the party. And not only that, at 156000 when you can just get an old-school NSX for anywhere around twenty five. I've seen some even going for fifteen thousand. I know they go around thirty thousand, but you could get them a lot cheaper, man. Boost the hell out of it, and you have a hell of a lot cooler car than this fucking iPhone on wheels, man. And that was it for today's top five list, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you did. Let me know if you didn't. Let me know if you guys have any suggestions. Subscribe for more. I'll catch you guys on the next one.